Okay, in the last video, we got our projections all lined up to with our Landsat bands um, and our Nath imagery. Okay, and so they're all lined up here. This is Bear Lake over here. Now, what I want to do with this one is I want to show you how you can merge these all together so you can have a stacked raster and you can display it with different color combinations, which we'll use to identify our training and our test data sets and identify which locations or what type of land cover. Okay, So the way we do that, it's very simple. We're going to go to raster. We're going to go to miscellaneous. We're going to build a virtual raster. So we want to select the inputs. And an important thing is to make sure these are in order. So band two, three, four, five, six, seven, you want them in this order. We're going to select all the bands. And then I'm going to unselect the nape, which is that one on the bottom. Okay, so make sure the nape is not selected. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to leave these all the same. I'm going to save to a file. And I'm going to name it merged. And I tested this out to make sure it worked already. That's why I already have the file there. But let's save it as merged. I'll replace mine. You won't have to replace yours. And we'll click run. Okay, so it finished. We can now close this. You can see we have merged here. I'll slide it to the top. You'll see it does not show up because we don't have the projection set. So I'm going to double click that. I'm going to go to source. We're going to set the projection to our custom Albers projection here. Say OK and say OK. Okay, and now we have them on there. I'm going to slide it down below the nape. And you can see we've got this really weird color combo. So let's go in. And if we go back to our band descriptions on the internet, we can see 2, which is now 1, is blue. 3, which is now 2, is green. 4, which is now 3, is red. So we want to make sure we have them in that order. So let's go to symbology, multi-band color. We want to go 3, 2, one and say apply and say okay open oh, I did that on the nape sorry that was my fault I did the wrong one let's go back and switch these back to one two three so that'll fix the nape back to normal and let's double click on merged and change these to three two one then we can say apply and say OK. And you can see that that is a little more true to real color. I'll turn these bottom ones off so that we can just zoom in and see this. OK. All right. So now we are able to see our images. Um, and you'll notice these are taken at different times. Right? Still there's water on the beach here, but the beach here is sand, so these were probably taken at different times of the year. Um, but now we can start to do some land cover classification here and set up our training and our test data sets. Okay? And we'll do this for both the um, pixel-based analysis and the image-based analysis. All right. So I, the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to define a coordinate system we want to use because that's going to be really important when we're pulling all these data in. Our points need to be in the same coordinate system as our um, raster data. So if we take a look at this and the projection here, this is in NAD 83 UTM zone 12. And this one is in, our merged one is in our custom Albers projection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this merged and I am going to right click and I'm going to export. And I'm going to save it as a GeoTIFF. And I'm going to change this CRS to UTM Zone 12. And I'm going to select the file.
and I'm going to go to my C drive and temp Landsat in this folder and I'm going to save this as merged UTM-12 save okay this might take just a sec to save so I'll pause the video while it does that alright so we have our merged file and I'm just going to remove the rest of these so don't clutter up our workspace and let's go back and uh, change our symbology here so this should be three two one apply okay okay and you can see our colors change a little because we get things resampled and so I'm just gonna make the caveat here I'm being really flippant in how I resample these rasters and those transformations that are made those are going to affect your data um, so if you're doing this for real, you're going to want to be really careful about those transformations you make and making sure your reflectance values um, remain in, or keep their integrity. I'm not worrying about that. I'm just trying to show you how to do this. Um, and it's going to be your responsibility to make sure that you keep your data as clean as possible. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we need to go in and we need to find some land cover types and we need to mark what those are. And we probably are actually going to, well, we'll just do this in a way that we can use the same data set for both um, the Landsat data and the NAPE data. And that way um, we, we don't have to create two data sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new vector layer, a new shape file. And this is going to be, we'll call it truth data. Um, it's going to be a point. We don't have any additional dimensions, and this needs to be in UTM zone 12. And I'm going to create some fields here. And so this is going to be LC type, land cover type. And I'm just going to have one field which is going to tell me the land cover type. And I'm going to say at the fields list, that have an ID, a land cover type, and I'm going to remove the ID field actually, we don't need that. We're just going to have a land cover type, it's going to be a string, and we can leave it at 80, that's fine. And I'm going to say OK to create this field, or to create this layer. Okay, so now I have this truth data layer. And I am going to edit this layer, and I want to add points. <clears throat> and the first point I'm going to add is going to be water. I'm going to add a point here, and LC type is water. Okay. And I'm going to add a point here, water. I'm just going to copy water so I can paste in for these other ones. Okay. And these points aren't showing up. Add another one, water. Okay. Add another one water okay and I'm just going to add a bunch of these for water okay now let's save our changes here and the reason I'm not showing up is because I put it on the bottom let's put it on top now you can see I have these water points All right now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some vegetation types down here <coughs> and so this looks like coniferous trees so click on this again i'm going to add some more points and i'm going to say conifer i'm going to copy that say okay another one oops okay one here okay another one there okay and then we'll do some over here. So you're going to want to have a number of points uh, in each category. Remember that Landsat pixels 
are 30 meters. You can see the difference between Landsat and NAEP here. And so you want these to be able to be spaced at least 30 meters apart so that they work for Landsat and for NAEP. And you're going to want at least 10 points in each land cover type and maybe more than that. And so you can decide what land cover types you want. I'm going to go with, I have water, I'm going to go with some conifer, um, and then let's just find a few more here as well. So I'm going to save those edits. And we have kind of this thing here that's more type open type stuff. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to call this uh, open. Okay, and I have roads here. I don't know if these will show up well. We can check and see. Those roads don't really show up well on um, on the nape. We'll call it dirt road here. And then um, we have some other vegetation types. You'll notice here this is either maple or aspen. Um, not exactly sure which. It looks a lot like aspen. We'll call this aspen. Okay, so aspen. And then we have kind of this meadow shrub community here. So we'll call this one here. We'll call this uh, meadow. Okay, so we've got some open, some meadows, some aspen. And then we have this stuff here that looks kind of more like our shrub community. So we'll call this shrub. And ideally, you'd have points on the ground that you measured with the high resolution GPS, something like an RTK GPS. You can see this is probably sagebrush. We'll just conclude that in our shrub community. Um, and then we have some houses and things there that we can add different classes for. Okay, and then we have some more maybe wet meadows down here. We have some more water features. <clears throat> and we have some beach features. I'm probably going to leave the beach out just because the, the water levels are different between these two images. What you're going to do is you're going to just get a number of points throughout your image here, and those are going to be our training and test data. We're going to divide them up later. Um, so I've showed you how to do that. I'm going to stop this video here and finish this on my own because it's going to take a, a fair amount of time to do it. And at the beginning of the next video or at the end of this one, I'll be able to pause it and show you what it looks like at the end. All right, so I'll do that. Okay, so I've got my points laid out. I can now save edit, stop editing, and I'm just going to go symbolize these so that we can see kind of what's what. Um, and let's go to symbology and categorized. And value is going to be the LC type. And we're going to click classify. And I'm going to delete all of their values. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Click classify. Remove just all of their values. And let's make water. Well, we can leave it just like this for now. because We'll do it quick. So we click OK. And you can see that I have aspen, which I kind of did all deciduous vegetation, all deciduous trees, conifers. Dirt roads, which also includes paved roads, meadows, which also includes agriculture, open areas, um, shrub, and water. Okay, so those are the points I have, and those are the ones we're going to use for our test data and for our training data. So there you have it. Um, hope you're able to get this done. It takes a little bit of time, but we'll use those data moving forward in our analysis.